the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service has set an effective date for the new public charge rule. This is that inadmissibility on public charge grounds rule out of the Department of Homeland Security. It will take effect Monday, February 24th, 2020. This comes after the announcement out of the U.S. Supreme Court that the injunction that was nationwide on this rule has been lifted. The emergency appeal to the United States Supreme Court lifted the injunction that had been set by lower courts. Lawsuits in the meantime are still ongoing, but this rule will now take effect February 24th nationwide, except for the state of Illinois. There is separate litigation and a separate injunction that affects just the state of Illinois. So the effective date for the rest of the country is February 24th. And should anything change in the state of, of Illinois, USCIS and Homeland Security will issue separate guidance with rules of how they should start following the nationwide rule. Now remember, the purpose of this change is to expand the federal government's ability to deny visas or permanent residency to legal immigrants if that immigrant benefits from non-cash or cash assistance. The existing rule for public charge specifies only cash assistance. The new definition now includes non-cash assistance for the first time. And this is things like Medicaid and food assistance and housing assistance. It gives discretion to the, the USCIS officers to use public benefit use as a heavily weighted negative factor against a person who is trying to change status. It is a totality of the circumstances evaluation. They're going to be looking at a lot of factors to determine, and this is the standard, if the individual has a likelihood of becoming a public charge at any time in the future. So when you try to change your status to a more permanent status, the USCIS immigration officer will be looking at your age, your income, your health, education, skill set, employment, family size, a number of circumstances. Use of public benefits is one of those evaluations. It's If you use public benefits, it's not an outright denial of your more permanent status, but it's a factor that will be used against you in that totality of the circumstances evaluation. Now, the comment coming out of USCIS of, of why they are moving forward with this rule um, was simply to say that they believe self-sufficiency is a core American value, and they believe that this should be the new standard for anybody coming into the United States. Now, the rule impacts only the individual public benefit user herself. There were a lot of questions from individuals saying, you know, they maybe don't use public benefits, but maybe their children do. Can that be used against them? The way the rule is written in that scenario would be, no, the heavily weighted negative factor is for the person himself or herself being evaluated and what their health is, what public benefit use they're, they're using, their age, their income. So you're looking at the individual public benefit user in the evaluation in this totality of circumstances. Now let's talk about what it means to have this effective date of February 24th. Coming right out of USCIS is the statement that USCIS will only apply the final rule to applications and petitions postmarked or submitted electronically on or after February 24th, 2020. There is not a look back period to see if somebody was using public benefits, say in the middle of July of last year. They're gonna be starting this new final rule applying to only new applications coming in on or after this new effective date. Now for applications, and they give this clarification because some people do use commercial carriers to submit their applications. Um, for any that are coming in by commercial carrier, the postmark date is the date reflected on that courier receipt. So that's a good clarification to make sure people know what to expect when they submit documents to USCIS. Now, there was a little confusion as well. Because this public charge rule had been held up in the court so long, the original implementation date was October 15th, 2019. And it was determined at that time that the text of the final rule prohibited the Department of Homeland Security from considering an application, certification, approval, or receipt of public benefits before October 15th as something that would be used potentially in this new evaluation. Well, because of the implementation delay, that text of that final rule is effectually changed to now read that the, the Department of Homeland Security is prohibited from considering applications or certifications or receipt of public benefits before February 24th, 2020. So again, if somebody was using public benefits in November of 2019, that will not be a heavily weighted negative factor against them. They are only forward-looking 
from February 24th on. So a little detail in the effective date that is now presented. Um, let's talk about what is happening impact-wise. We already know there is a chill factor even before this rule was implemented. We have already experienced people that were afraid to use public benefits, afraid to use hospitals and clinics for fear that it could be used against them should they change to, choose to change status later. The direct impact uh, a lot of health policy experts and hospitals are telling us is the decline in the use of public benefits individuals are legally entitled to and eligible for. Hospitals are saying that they're going to see an increase in uncompensated care and probably an increase in emergency room use instead of people getting the regular care that they should be getting that could be supported um, by an insurance system. Indirect impact, we already know also, and we know this from history, that this rule will reach further than the direct immigrant population outlined. We know that families are afraid to take U.S. citizen children to the doctor or sign them up for the public benefits they're entitled to for fear that it could be used against them or just because of a misunderstanding of who the nuances of this rule actually applies to. Here's how you can stay current on some information. The USCIS will post updated forms, submission instructions, and a policy manual guidance on their website, that USCIS website, and we link to that in the description below, during the week of February 3rd, 2020. So in advance of the rule taking effect, USCIS will be um, sharing their updated forms and guidance. They are updating their policy ma manual. You will be able to link, find the link to that from that US, USCIS.gov website. In the meantime, you can read that USCIS announcement that goes over the effective date details, postmark details, the fact that there is not a look back of public benefit use before February 24th. You can read more on that in that USCIS announcement and we link to that in the description below. And finally, we share one more time the text of the public benefit rule as it originally appeared in the Federal Register back in the middle of 2019. So you can refresh your memory of who is impacted, what public benefits may be considered, and the, the outstanding uh, impact that could happen moving forward after February 24th. We also share a link to some immigrate, immigrant attorneys that you may find useful to connect with if you have questions about your own case, your own family, and the public benefit use, either cash or non-cash assistance that is coming into your home. And we share that link so you can have access to resources as well. As this unfolds, as we hear stories from families, as we get more guidance from USCIS, we will come back to you with more information. Make sure to like this video and subscribe so when we do new content, you can be have access to that as well.